I partnered this company called Hip Hop Trends. Hip Hop Trends is in Arizona. We were throwing shows, we were doing concerts. Doing shows, doing concerts. I became a partner. Our first show was Slim 400 in Phoenix, Arizona. Sold out. Boom. We did OT Genesis, we did Kurt Bang. The list goes on. I'm now a 50-50 partner in this, in this company. We start doing the blog and stuff because the shows, uh, the pandemic, the pandemic slows shit down. The shows, you know, you can only have 50% capacity in the building, you know what I'm saying? So we're not making no money. So we pivoted to online. Let's, let's do the IG, let's do the YouTube, let's do the, the website. We all monetize, we're trying to figure it out. My homeboy, towards the end of the pandemic, bro, get on Clubhouse, bro, I got this room, woo, woo, woo. my homeboy from 5'5", five five, Napo. Shout out to five fives. He starts a room called Mixed Emotions. Mixed Emotions was was catering to women, relationships, uh, uh, you know, things of that nature, right? So we go turn that motherfucker up. Everybody from LA in there. Everybody from LA. So a light bulb goes off. I said, let me create hip hop trends on here. Cause I don't see nobody talking about hip hop on here like that. Or, or debating and having these discussions. It's a lot of fake paperwork rooms, a lot of, you know, a lot of bullshit. So I started Hip Hop Trends on there. Instant hit. Instant hit. People attracting to it. They love the conversation. They want to be a part of it. I start interviewing people, all the rappers from LA, uh, West Coast rappers, uh, old school to new school. I mean, everybody has been on that Clubhouse platform with me. And a lot of people first time on Clubhouse was through me. So, you know, uh, it just turned into something. I just kept it rolling, kept it rolling. And uh, after a while, people was like, hey, man, you media. You part of the media. Like, this is some media shit. So I just took it serious, man. So uh, Hip Hop Trends, uh, you know, I, I rock with Hip Hop Trends. Fuck. Uh, shout out, shout out, shout out Henny Flats and uh, the people at Hip Hop Trends. But, you know, I end up taking my talents and just really focusing solely on what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? I can't, uh, it's hard to have two visions and they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not transparent with each other in no type of form. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we got to be on some type of, we got to be on the same page somewhere. So that's why I started Smut Free TV. I always had Smut Free Entertainment. That's been me. Been rapping for a minute, LLC. I just put the TV on it now. And we doing, we, we exclusive content. We taking this shit by storm. Uh, I, I mean, I've been doing it for a minute. I, it ain't nothing really too much change. I'm just amping it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? With my flavor. See, I used to have to holler at my partner and be like, hey man, what you, you know? Now I'm just going with my gut. It's all me. Can't nobody tell me what to do or how to do it or even give me, give me to uh, persuade me to do something that I don't, you know what I'm saying? So shout out Hip Hop Trends, and we still got Hip Hop Trends Clubhouse, and we still got the Smut Free TV Clubhouse, but Smut Free TV is fully me, Smut Free Entertainment, and I'm just trying to give y'all that raw, uncut, I'm not trying to give y'all the same content everybody else give y'all. So if y'all see me on IG, and I, I maybe post one to three posts a day, I'm not posting 5, 10, 15, 20, I'm not oversaturating. I want something to hit, I, I, quality over quantity. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm about at Smut Free TV. And, and I'm just here to get an unknown, a unknown a place to go. You know what I'm saying? If you talking some shit, you got a voice, you want to be heard, come to Smut Free TV, we'll hear you out. You know what I'm saying? If it makes sense. So how did, um, how did, how did WAC become a big part of, of, of the content creation? Over so, there? a lot of people don't know. We was on whack ass to begin with. Uh, me and Newport from 60s, we ran a room in my room one day, supporting Nipsey Hustle, And we went big on whack. Whack came in there, we kicked that nigga up out of there, all that. Was on that nigga head. The room was so viral, it, it went all over the internet. i never forget that room, because that's the most participation we ever had from the chat, from the people in the group. I'm talking about they was putting flags, Nipsey Hustle shit in the chat. 
it was going crazy, right? So that's how we, that's how I got introduced to WAC and got on WAC Radio. Then he says my name. I throw a brunch in Arizona, a Super Bowl brunch. The day before the Super Bowl brunch, the, the Super Bowl brunch happened on Saturday. The day before Friday, I wake up to WAC saying my name, saying Rockstar. If you said something about my family, Fuck you, fuck your mama, woo woo woo. Internet go crazy. I posted on my shit. I said, okay, let's have fun with this nigga. I post a meme of uh, Chris Rock and uh, Will Smith. I'm Will Smith, he Chris Rock. I'm slapping him, saying don't talk about my mama. I make a t-shirt, I put it up for sale, all that. Boom, run into whack again. Poetic Flacco. Room go viral. He tells me what, so a lot of people don't know Poetic Flacco from No Jumper. That's my boy. Me and Poetic met on some, on some crazy shit. I, I thought he was somebody else. I seen AD post him. I get on his bumper, AD put us on the phone. I let Cud know, I hopped in his DM like, nigga, I can come get you right now. I know where you at. Flacco wave the white flag, call AD, we get online, we end up cool. Flacco has helped me a lot during this content creating process, giving me pointers, etc. Blogging, you feel me? He's definitely been a bro, a brother in this thing. Wack coming in and say some shit like, he, he gonna send some niggas up there to beat his ass or something. I'll tell a nigga, no, you ain't, you ain't finna do nothing, nigga. Fuck you mean, nigga, you ain't touching that nigga. Oh, what, what? You gonna take up for this North Dakota nigga? Is this crip taking up for a North Dakota? You feel me? So that it start going crazy. We packed that nigga up, got him up out of there. So the nigga don't know we been getting into it. We been having this power struggle. But whack excuse every time is, oh man, you know, we ain't enemies in real life. You know what I'm saying? You ain't never did nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? I heard my, you ain't never talked. You feel me? So after a while, I don't, I don't know how he started coming to my room though. He just started coming in there. And uh, we just start building a rapport. Building a rapport. I'm like, fuck it. This is his playground. This clubhouse shit is his playground. Of course, he gonna try to come for dangle his way in here. Let's entertain this nigga. Let's give him something to talk. Let's, you know, cause he gonna do it in any room he go to. That's what y'all don't understand. He gonna go to anybody room and talk crazy. Is this with my room? He figured, oh, I'm a crip. He trying to be semi cool, but at the same time, he trying to semi diss too. We know, I, I, I could read in between the lines, I know. So a lot of people, when they be like, oh, I told you so, Wack was going to Bro, you're not telling me nothing I don't know already. We prepared for that. We prepared for all that. We let this man talk. It was nights I never came off that mic and I just let him talk. Oh, it's nights I'm just in there, I'm doing something else. I'm like, yeah, Wack. Yeah, Wack. Okay, Wack. We, we boosting the nigga ego. We, bro, we, we getting the content because when I, when I realized... See, I was trying to realize how to monetize the clubhouse shit. Because I, I got tired of being on there and start being a problem. Like, we on there too long. We talking. We, we not really getting no money. These other niggas. Okay, now. Oh, I get it. I'm going to clip this nigga. He come to my room. He want to talk crazy in my room. Let me start getting money off this nigga. So that's what we start doing. We start clipping this nigga. Come on, whack. Come up in this motherfucker. Come on. <laughs> Come talk crazy today. Yeah, we go here. Yeah, we gonna clip that shit right up, nigga, and I'm gonna make some money off you, nigga. Exactly, exactly what I did. So that's why he was in the room. That's why we tolerated. I tolerated and accepted that shit for only so long. What I'm not gonna do is let a nigga put a nigga in the trick bag and act like we was best friends and I was just telling nigga top secret shit, bro. I don't listen. This is an internet-based relationship. If y'all don't understand that, I don't know what to tell y'all. I put up on this guy once, and like I say, he a different person in person than he is on the internet, and that's what's so shocking to me. The nigga nice as hell. Cool, the coolest nigga. That shit is weird. So I don't understand how, how niggas be so weird, bro. I just let a nigga be, be him. You stay over there, and I stay over here. Don't worry about me, bro. You know what I'm saying? You came looking for me. I didn't come looking for you. It wasn't the other way around. So, 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 um, 
recently you guys, I guess, had, was that the final straw of, how, when, when did you guys first start working on this? I don't know if you could call it working together on Clubhouse or whatever, but when did that start? And how long has it been up until to, to the most it's, recent it's, situation? Man, it's been some months. It's been like, I mean, a lot of people say it's been like a year. I mean, I guess time go by fast, but I feel like it's been like probably over six months, a little over six months. But, I mean, we talked about everything. A lot of people, look, y'all just getting the clips. Y'all not getting the whole room, the whole context of the room and what we talking about. Ask this nigga a million questions. Y'all only seeing the viral ones. Y'all not understanding the real conversations. And sometimes we have decent conversations like this man could not be on bullshit. And we can actually get a point across. And sometimes it's just up, it's up. But he has mastered the internet. That's one thing I won't take nothing away. He has mastered the algorithm on saying shit for shock value. We got to give him his credit on that. But what we're not going to do is confuse, cause confusion within the streets. And, and that's what the thing I'm trying to clear up. That this nigga, he an entertainer. He, he don't really have no say so. He not moving no weight on, on this West Side Crip shit. So, you know, that's where I'm at with it. So what, do you, what was the final straw that um, severed the relationship? To be honest, it was you. What? <laughs> you know, the way he uh, disrespected the interview, you know, I wasn't too fond, my people wasn't too fond of that. You know, they really wanted to hear the interview from you. They really wanted to hear what you had to say. I, I really think he came in there with the malicious intent, off top, he was just waiting for his cue. He heard Munchie B name, that was his cue to come in there and cause a distraction. And what's so funny, when we argue, he thinks that clip made the, he like, oh, that clip, nigga, the, your interview, bro, I don't, bro, well, we wasn't even on that. So he's so caught up in, in this internet shit, he don't even know how to be real and be cool. So that's just, it, it, listen, bro. That's what I'm saying. So so he, he disrespected the interview with Alex Alonzo, and then, uh. The whole uh, Brick Baby and 600 was in there. He did some weird shit when Brick Baby left and was trying to, he, he lowball was instigating the shit between Brick Baby and 600. And we was listening to it and watching it before our eyes. I'm like, you see this shit? I had to call Brick to come back in the room. Like, boy, come back in the room. This nigga brought 600 in here. He talking crazy like, you feel me? Come in here, nigga. So it's just like, it's too much shit, bro. Enough is enough. I'm not about to entertain it. Keep on, you know, because people want to want me to take accountability for for in, involving him. To me, take take the shoes out. Me being a crip, I'm a blogger podcaster. That's what I am, a blogger podcaster. If I wasn't a crip, y'all wouldn't be saying none of this. And and them niggas can ask the questions, but I can't. That's not fair. Y'all gotta be fair. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at with it. And that's another thing with whack. And one day, oh man, fuck the streets. The streets is a myth. Then the next day, you ain't been to jail. You ain't no hood nigga. I'm like, bro, what is it with you? I don't understand. I don't get it. So that's where I'm at with it. It's fuck that nigga though. I'm my dead homie. We can never be cool. You don't bring up a nigga kids acting like you did something for me. Nigga ain't did nothing for me. And that's another thing. A nigga want to act like he hurt helping people. You hurting the West Coast right now. You are hurting and causing confusion. You have yet to put a nigga in a real positions. You have the power to do so and you abuse it. So, something got to give. It's like something got to give, bro.